As you know, the Golf GTI has been around since 1976. And if you look at all the generations side by side, it's really interesting because you're gonna see some key features or graphic features of the Golf GTI that still exist today. Graphic features and proportions that have been consistent throughout the years. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show you all the most of the generations. I'm gonna skip a couple because there are so many. And then I'm gonna take the first generation and modernize that into a new modern version of the original Golf GTI. I'm not going to make it into an EV, which I usually make when I make these. I want to have a, a fun little funky GTI car that is inspired by the original, meaning small, still with quad exhaust and fatter tires and just looks a little bit more modern than the original. So let's have a look at the lineup here of Golf GTI, starting with the first generation up here, introduced in 1975, I think for the 1976 model year, the Golf GTI up here. And this this is of course a classic design. So we have a very simple design here. You can see that we have the basic uh, bottom part of this right here. If you want to learn how to sketch cars, I would suggest starting to sketch with cars from the 70s because they have such simple ge geometric forms that you can start by uh, sketching something in, in perspective, almost a box in perspective. And from there, you can start to mold the car. I teach more about this in my course, Analog Designer Pro Pack, if you want to go and check that out down in the description. But these 70s cars, very, very easy to sketch, specifically inside view, because we basically have two boxes here and that's it. And this this style continues throughout the decade. So the proportions that I'm talking about here when it comes to the Golf is we have this box right here. We have two boxes, one box being this where you have the greenhouse and everything that uh, the occupants sit within. And then you have the hood, which kind of stretches pretty straightforward out here and just creates another box like that. So those are the two simple boxes that we have throughout the generations. Another graphic feature is that it's very, very important for any Golf to keep and they still keep that graphic features today is the C pillar. So this C pillar treatment is specific for the Golf. You can see it here in the first generation going like this and you can see it throughout the generations right here on the second generation as well. Very fat C pillar in, in, in comparison to, for example, just look at how thin the B pillar is here compared to the C pillar and the A pillar is even thinner than the B pillar. But as you can see, jumping from these two generations right here, you do get a little bit more structure in this. You do get a little bit more of the fenders melting into to the car to the car design itself it does it doesn't look like it's just a piece that's been stuck on to the design right here it looks a little bit more more integrated and more smooth but what i love about the golf is that it looks rugged it still has these fender flares right here which is made from rubber from plastic or rubber and it makes it look like it could potentially if you just have some cool tires on there you could potentially make this into almost an off-road vehicle because it is so rugged and so protected all around the car right here and that continues into to the third generation right here. So what I wanna focus on here, still keep focus on the graphic feature that is the C pillar and just look how that evolves over time here. We still have it be very thick here on the third generation as well. We still have some plastic added pieces to the car, the, the, the trim pieces, which makes the cars look dated in today's, by today, today's standard. But if you look at the bumpers front and back, you can see how more and more integrated they become into the car, into the body of the car and they don't they start to go from a separate piece that were just slammed onto the body into an actual piece sculptured design that is part of the overall car design itself. We still have a thick C pillar here, kind of thin B pillar, but now the A pillar with all safety features and regulations being updated needs to be thicker in case of a rollover. And then we go into the next generation right here. And this is I, this is probably one of my favorite generation golfs is I had to pick two generations that are my favorite. It's going to be this generation right here and the first generation up here and the reason for it is here we really have the DNA of a Golf hammered into the design of the car. Just look at the treatment of the C pillar here for example. The cut line creates this distinct design or line right here that we have going and this continues all throughout the generations that I've showed you previous to this. We still have a pretty thick B pillar now and the A pillars just keep getting thicker which is normal for the safety regulations as we talked about in the previous generation right here. But look now we, we don't have this plastic piece right here that we have on the older generations and just that little change into the body color makes it look like a, a lot more modern design than the previous generation by just making those trim pieces body colored you still have the same kind of styling as the previous generation but with the graphic features and the graphic playing around with different colors and body colors it makes the car look like it's 20 years 
newer than the previous generation. Another thing I love about this generation GTI are the wheels here. Simple five spoke wheels, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that, specifically since it's a Volkswagen. As I've talked about before, when I, when I was in school and they had designers from Volkswagen come over, they brought like a, a book this thick with rules how to design a Volkswagen the right way. And one of the key rules the Volkswagen has when they design cars is you don't want any lines or any graphic or any, anything on the car to be there without any sort of reason behind it. So everything needs to have a function. And I think this design right here just shows that uh, design philosophy in a very cool package. I think the proportions are spot on for this uh, generation right here. And then we move, move on to this generation, which is the next one from this. And you can see that the bumpers now are completely integrated in the body right here. You don't even have a bumper sticking out in the front anymore, but we still have the C pillar treatment right here, which has been throughout the, the generations. And the B pillar is now black instead of being body colored. And that gives the greenhouse a larger, it looks like the greenhouse is a little bit larger now graphically, because if you have a black B pillar, it kind of fades out and makes it look like it's one single glass uh, surface and not being separated by the B pillar right there. But you still have this cool uh, rugged features down here in the bottom, which I've loved about the Golf GTI, that it looks still like a rugged car based on those graphic features in the bottom of the car. This is of course the latest generation. This is the four door now uh, Golf R. It's a cool looking car. What I think, I've made videos on this before, which, which I'm gonna link down in the description. I've redesigned this and I think I made a video just talking about what I think about this design. I'm not gonna go into much detail about that here, but it's a cool looking design. We still have a very traditional, very sharp design key feature right here. As I've said, this is one of the most important features of any Golf. If you lose that, you lose what makes a Golf a Golf. You still have the, the here of course, this is the biggest difference here is that we have four doors instead of uh, of uh, three doors, but it's still it's still a good looking car. We still have the black B pillar right here to hide the shape of that and the separation between the two doors. It looks cool. And I also like these wheels. What I don't like is the front end. I'm not a huge fan of that. I think it's too uh, laid back or too slippery. And I've made redesigns of that, as I said, which I'm gonna link down in the description. But now what we're gonna do in this video is redesign the first generation GTI into a modern looking version of that. I'm gonna use, it's almost gonna be like a resto mod, I would say. So here we have it. And this is the view I'm going to use. I'm pretty sure I've made the front view at some point here on this channel, but I'm, I'm, I'm no, I know for sure I haven't made the rear view. So of course, what we talked about, we talked about the graphic features of the car. We definitely need to keep this treatment of the C pillar right here. This isn't going anywhere. This, as I said, is key for any type of golf. We're also going to keep the overall proportions, but what we need to do here to make it look like a modern car is this uh, relation between the top part and the lower part of the car. You see, we have almost 50, 50 height here, and this is not going to work on a modern car. The greenhouse needs to be a little lower than this, or we need to move up the body. And I think moving up the body is going to look make it look a little too top heavy. So what I want to do instead is reduce or lower the greenhouse. So I'm going to lower this by maybe this point right here, and remove this top part right here. Of course, we're still going to have the same kind of graphic features and everything. We're just going to lower the whole greenhouse down a little bit. I love these taillights. These are simplistic taillights. And we see this happening now when we go into an electric era that manufacturers are starting to bring back some very cool old old models. For example, I think we have the Renault 5 is bring, coming back as an EV. We have the Opel, uh, Opel Manta, which is coming back as an EV concept as well. And then the Hyundai Pony, which is really cool as an EV. And it's really interesting to see that designers are starting to have a lot more fun now with the EV platform, bringing back legendary designs such as those and just having some fun and implementing them into a modern uh, design with the EV platforms. But as I said, this is not going to be an EV. I'm going to have the probably the Golf R exhaust down here with the diffuser, but these are going to be all LED. I want to have a big LED right here, two rectangles like that to keep the simplicity of this design. I'm a fan of these wheels here. I like the P for Pirelli here, probably. It's a very cool approach to just graphics inside of a wheel, but those are going to need to change, obviously. And I want to have beefier tires here for the GTI. And also this is going to be removed, but I think I'm going to keep these fenders here because as I said, the black fenders makes the Golf GTI almost like an off-road car. And that's kind of what I, what I want to keep in this design here as well. And this trim piece right here is obviously going to go. But what I love about this first generation Golf here is you have two panels in the side. It's a very simple design. You have the first panel right here facing a little bit upwards like this. So this panel is going to be a little 
little brighter than the lower panel, which is this panel right here, which is facing almost straight to the side. So this is going to reflect the horizon and this panel right here, these surfaces right here is going to reflect a little bit more of the sky because it's tilted just so ever so slightly up until the sky. Very cool, beautiful design that could easily be a very, very cool modern design today. So let's continue our Photoshop and let's see how this is going to turn out. I've said this before, but I think it's a really, really cool idea to bring back old legends and turn them into modern car designs because, you know, we have some, we have had some problems with car design lately where they seem to go round and round in circles by adding more to the designs instead of looking back at the original designs that, that made the brand great and then try to figure out how can we put this design into a modern car? How can we make, how can we take the original legends of our, of, of, of our brand and then figure out how we can make it work with today's regulations but still have the essence of the original design. So for example, if you want to have uh, the cars in the 70s, as I, show, as I showed you when we went through the, the generations of Golf GTI, cars in the 70s have a very, very thin A-pillar. So how can we get that into a production car today? What we can do is just play around with graphics. What we can have is on the outside, which is the body colored, we can only, we can have a thin strip being colored, be, being body color, but behind that we have the, the entire uh, fat structure of the A-pillar. So it isn't showing, it's behind the painted strip of the A-pillar. So you have visually, it's going to look like it's a very, very thin A-pillar, but behind that painted body color, you have the actual structure of the modern thick A-pillar itself but that's one way you can play with graphics in today's uh, designs to bring back some old cool designs such as a, a, a Golf GTI from the 1970s and just have some fun with that and bring it back into a modern car so what I'm doing right here as I said just wanted to keep the original styling wanted to keep the original two panels as we talked about the top panel of uh, the top half of the car is going to face upward going to be a little bit lighter than the lower panel facing to the side which is of course going to reflect the horizon line in the rear, that's where the major change is going to happen, and of course the wheels as well. Wanted to have a lower diffuser, quad exhaust, it just looks good on any car or, or any type of vehicle. And for the taillights, I just wanted to have some very, very simple graphics of the taillights, just like the original, and boom, here we have a brand new modern looking Golf GTI. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.